Hopefully you're not burning your furniture, but hey, who knows? What's up everyone, welcome back to the shop. My go-to finish is a hard wax like Osmo or Rubio Monaco. If I'm not using this finish, typically I'll default to a polyurethane, but I'm wondering, what if we do a comparison of these two and find out just how much abuse they can withstand? And then, well, how easy is it to fix this type of finish? I took a walnut board and sanded it to the grit that's specified on the instructions of these two finishes. Quick timeout, you're about to see me test Osmo as my hard wax finish compared to polyurethane. And before you rush to the comments and say, hey, what about Rubio Monocoat? I am gonna test Rubio just a little bit later on. And then I cut that board in half. I wanna make sure I'm using the same board for my test. That way we're eliminating any sort of variables, even if it's minute. Now I applied finish to both these boards according to the instructions. One of them was poly. So I used a mid wax poly and applied three coats to it, sanding in between coats, just like the instructions say. The other board I applied Osmo, and I did it just like the instructions say, and I applied three coats. I took these boards, set them to the side, and let them fully cure. It was a test in patience because, well, I was anxious to beat the crap out of them, but we need to let them cure fully. Now we're ready to subject these things to abuse. So before we do that, let's look at our initial impressions of these boards. This is completely subjective, I know. But looking at both of these boards, I have to say that I like the Osmo better, okay? It has a close to the wood look and feel. It brings out the characteristics of the board. I can see the figure in the walnut. It has a sheen, but not too shiny. But it's not leaps or bounds over the poly. This poly board looks really good. It again, brings out the character in the wood. I think it has a good sheen. It's a little bit shinier than the Osmo but I would say that it has a little bit more of a film look to it, which is not my preference, but still a really, really good finish. Now that we have our test board, let's put them up to the abuse that typical furniture will face, starting with the dreaded condensation from a glass. It doesn't look very sweaty. Oh crap, that's a lot of water. Well, that definitely was a lot more water than what it looked like, so let's start off with just trying to wipe it off. All right, there's definitely a ring there. We'll let it dry and see if that evaporates or um, if we gotta fix that later. Let's see how the poly did with the same test. Oh, yep, definitely some water there, but did not sink in whatsoever, so no ring at all. This next test, let's get a little bit careless. Let's say that you light a candle and you accidentally forget that it's burning and then the wax melts onto your finish or you light a match and you accidentally drop it on your table. Well, how's the finish hold up? Let's do the same test on the poly. For the hard wax finish, we've got some melted wax. We got a little burning mark right there from the match. Wonder how easy that's gonna be to clean up. The wax came off pretty easy. You can see a subtle outline of where the wax was, but you'd have to know it was there and then look at it at the right angle. I've thought it would remove some of the finish. It doesn't really seem like it. There is a little bit of wax that got into the grain, into the pores of the wood there that might come out with like a white scotch Brite pad if you buff it out. But otherwise it held up a little bit better than what I expected. The burn mark here, I tried to wipe that off buff it out, it's not buffing out, so that's something that we're gonna have to fix later on. Let's see if we can get the wax off of this one. All right, you can't really tell where the wax was at all. There's no marks there. There's not really any wax in the pores, so you would never know that a candle was burned there. You will see the burn mark though. That looks exactly the same as over on the hard wax finish, so no difference there and that's gonna have to be fixed. Hopefully you're not burning your furniture, but hey, who knows? 
Well, this next test is a little bit more practical. It's about the wear and tear, the abuse that we put towards our furniture. So let's say you have your keys in your pocket and you throw them on your table. Just over time, the nicks, the scrapes, the cuts, that kind of stuff. How does the finish hold up? Let's see. Let's do the hard wax finish first. Well, that was a borderline criminal. Please don't do that to any of your furniture. This has some pretty nasty scrapes, deep gouges in it. No chipped finish because it's not a film finish, so I didn't expect it. But they are some pretty gnarly looking gouges. We're going to see how easy that is to fix. All right, the same test on the polyurethane board. I tried to subject it to the same amount of abuse to try to make this fair. And I can see that it looks like it. It looks like the same type of marks that are on my hard wax board. Thing is, is there's a little bit more, there's some chips, some dust on it where the film chipped off. What I'm also seeing is that the scrapes themselves look more vivid because you see the white underneath it, where it looks like the hard wax finish soaked more into the wood. So it masked them. The scrapes are a little bit more visible on the poly board. Our fourth test is probably the most common, or at least if you're in the Newton Meigs household. And any of you with kids or grandkids know what I'm talking about, markers. I don't know what it is about markers, but they will always end up off the paper, off whatever protection you put down, and then onto the table. All right, the hard wax finish first. Get a couple colors. In the bane of any parent's existence, a Sharpie. Let's do the same thing to the poly board. I'm gonna try to clean this up with just some soap and water. I'm not using any harsh chemicals here. Might be hard to see on camera. The soap and water didn't really do a whole lot. Some of the markers look like they kind of disappeared, but if you look at the right light, right angle, you can see it's still there. Sharpie, obviously, the purple, obviously. So soap and water didn't remove very much. I'm looking to see, I don't see any damage to the finish though. By using soap and water, it all looks exactly the same to me. So that means we're gonna have to sand this away. All right, on the poly board, some soap and water. It looks like quite a bit of the marker did come off. There's a little bit of purple there. The Sharpie's obviously there. A hint of the orange marker, but all in all, it, it actually removed quite a bit. However, you still see the purple, you still see the black. That means we're still gonna have to sand this a bit. Let's assess the damage. When we look at the hard wax finish, there's a visible water ring from when we did the condensation test. There is no ring at all on the poly board. For the candle test, there's a slight mark there where you can see where the wax dripped onto the hard wax board. There is not really one over on the poly board. However, the burnt match, those look comparable. Both finishes are burned equally. The key test, both boards are marked up. The hard wax finish board, I feel like that the marks are not as visible because they're not as white. They kind of blend in with the surface a little bit more. They're there, don't get me wrong. They're just not as vivid as the ones of the poly where you had some of the finish kind of flake off on it and some of those marks are a little bit wider. For the marker test, the poly board did a little bit better than the hard wax finish board. The marker cleaned up a little bit better. However, there's still marker on both boards, especially the purple and the black, so both of them are gonna have to be sanded and refinished. I think a lot of makers out there would say that if I have to refinish this, I'm gonna take them and sand the entire surface down and then apply a fresh coat of finish. And you might have to, but what I'm wondering is, is what if you had a big piece of furniture, a big table or something, and you had a little mark that you needed to fix? Are you gonna sand down the entire thing to fix that little mark? Well, maybe, but let's try to do just a little test area and see if we can fix it that way. So I'm gonna take some sandpaper and sand away the areas that had the damage and then apply just finish to those spots. And we're gonna see, can we fix it that way or are we kind of adding to the problem? Both of these finishes advertise sanding your board to 220 grit before applying finish. Now with the poly, it also says to sand with 220 grit in between coats. You don't sand between coats on the Osmo. Since both of them say to use 220, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sand just the trouble areas with 220 grit and then we'll apply finish.
I applied three coats of finish to all of these, but before I tell you the results, let me just preference this by saying this is a subjective test. We're looking at it through my eyes at these particular boards in my shop with my lighting. So, you know, it is subjective. Also, I love both these finishes. So regardless of the outcome, don't feel like I'm picking on one finish over another because I think both of them absolutely have their place. Okay, with all that being said, when I'm looking at the areas that were fixed, it looks like the hard wax finish did a better job of masking those areas. I can still see some of those spots. When I turn the board to a certain angle, I can see it. I also know where those spots are at, so I think that will play a little bit of a part in it. And it would benefit from another coat of finish, I think, to help blend it a little bit more. But the Osmo seemed to do a little bit better, the hard wax seemed to do a little bit better than the poly. The thing with the poly is, I can still see those areas, but what I also see is the overlapping of the new finish on top of the old finish. So where the new finish had to, I had to apply the new finish and then it goes to the old finish, you can kind of see those lap marks. It just doesn't blend very well. And that was the problem with trying to fix a poly finish is that consistency. Because Rebid Monocoat is one of the most popular hard wax finishes, I did test that as well. So the condensation test, it did leave a watering. It was not as prominent as the Osmo hard wax finish, but there was a watering and it had to be fixed. The candle test, the burn mark and the poured wax looked the same as it did with the Osmo, the hard wax finish. The key test looked pretty much the same. The only difference is this board is a little bit darker, so it is a little bit harder to see on camera some of those key marks, but it was exactly like the Osmo. There's not really a whole lot of protection whenever it comes to that sort of damage that you can perform on a board like this. The marker test was interesting because the marker seemed to soak into the wood a little bit more than what it did with the Osmo. Don't know why. Also, this board's a little bit darker, so it kind of masks some of those markers on camera. But after using soap and water and cleaning it up, you can still see the purple and you can see the black. Also, water did not have an impact on the finish. So just like with the Osmo, Soap and water was perfectly fine for cleaning this. Just like with the Osmo board and the poly board, I did sand those spots and then refinished it. The end result was comparable to the Osmo. I will say though that the mono coat does do a better job of masking and blending in the new areas compared to the old areas. So again, like Osmo, hard wax finish is much easier to do your touch-ups than it is poly. Monocoat does a little bit better job at it than Osmo does. Overall, I didn't see much of a difference between the Osmo and the Monaco in terms of the types of damage that the finish can withstand. So I guess when it comes to the final results, the polyurethane did better when it comes to durability, and that shouldn't surprise anybody, but I wanted to make sure that I tested myself because I have seen so many claims out there of hard wax finishes being the end-all be-all finish. And again, I'm not picking on it because I love those finishes. But I've seen people say, you can't get water rings from condensation, all these things. Well, in my test, absolutely you can. However, the hard wax finish is much easier to fix. And I just like the look of the finish better. I would still use that as my go-to, even though it's not as durable as the poly finish. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out this other video over here that might be really helpful in your woodworking journey. Until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.